Greetings, fellow babies. My name is Andy Anderson, and welcome to In the Kitchen with Andy. Now, you know what? I've got a hankering for a pot pie. Did you grow up with pot pies like I did? The frozen ones. You basically put them into the oven. They're in a, like, aluminum tin. They have a top. They have a bottom. They have a lot of veggies. They had, oh, I don't know, corn, peas, onions, lines, and tigers. Oh, my. They didn't have a lot of chicken or anything in them. You know, so, you know, take out a microscope and find that chicken that's in there. But I like pot pies. We're going to make a simple one. We're not going to use a lot of veggies. We're going to use one, mushrooms. We're going to use a protein. Now, the protein is up to you. I had planned to do this as a chicken pot pie. But when I got to the store, they had some really good fresh turkey. And I thought, you know, I like turkey pot pies. So this one's going to be turkey. You'll probably hear me say more than once, chicken. Just substitute that word. But it doesn't matter what the protein is. It could be chicken, could be turkey, could be, oh, I don't know, it could be beef, it could be pork, the other white meat. That's up to you. Double the mushrooms and just make it a vegetarian dish. Doesn't matter. Now look down here because the ingredients are actually pretty simple. I'm going to use grapeseed oil for two reasons. Number one, it does not impart any flavor to the dish and it has a really high smoke point. So we're going to be using grapeseed oil. I have eight ounces of mushrooms right here, and I have eight ounces of turkey right here. So it's a 50-50 ratio, if you will. Now, I've stemmed and cleaned off the mushrooms. That's all I've done to them. I have a shallot. That's one big shallot, I want to tell you. That's about one ounce by weight. And I have two garlic cloves. I'm going to finely dice the shallot, and I am going to mince the garlic cloves. Now, I'm going to put them in these dishes right here, oven-proof dishes, after we get done. I've got salt and pepper to taste. I have puff pastry. Now, I usually make my own puff pastry. It's really not that hard, but I'm going to be lazy, and we're going to use store-bought puff pastry, okay? My binding ingredient is sauce supreme. Now, what is that? Well, I did a video on this. It takes about 30 minutes to make it. It's not that hard to make, but it's not your typical, oh, let's put some flour in some milk and let's whip it all up and get it nice and thick and dump it into our chicken pot pie. This down here is going to make the difference. It's going to bind all the ingredients together. Now, what we need to do, obviously, is we need to quarter the mushrooms. Now, I'm not going to slice them thin. Why? Because I want to taste mushroom. I don't want little pieces of paper that they call mushroom. I'm going to quarter them. I'm going to finely dice this. I'm going to mince this. I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator in a minute, and I'm going to cut up the turkey into bite-sized pieces because I would like to actually bite a piece of turkey and not have to find it. So let's do that now. Didn't know I was that fast, did you? We have quartered mushrooms. We have cut our turkey, chicken, pork, whatever, into bite-sized pieces. This is actually, it came out to about two tablespoons of finely chopped shallot and about one teaspoon of freshly minced garlic. So you know what? The only thing we have left to do is put it all together in a pan and start cooking. So let's go over to the stovetop and get working. What do you say? We're here by the stovetop and the pan I have down here is on the heat. It's up to about 180 degrees, and that's about fine. I'm going to put in just a little bit of my grapeseed oil, about one, one and a half tablespoons, not a lot. And what I'm going to do is allow that to swirl a little bit, just like that. Ha! And I'm going to add my turkey, my pork, whatever you're going to use, okay? Well, one thing about poultry, though, I think you guys know this, is you want to be careful with it. Because if you let it sit out for too long or whatever, it can cause a problem. Now, I don't want to overcook it, but what I want to do here is get the pink out of it. Now, that'll take, now, five to seven minutes. The reason that I put the oil in after the pan heated up is it kind of almost makes the pan like non-stick. There was a lady, actually is a lady on PBS, that talks about non-stick cooking, and she basically says that if you have to use non-stick pans to do non-stick cooking, then you don't know how to cook. Now, I think that's a little bit drastic, to be honest with you, because there are a few things, like fish, that I like to use a non-stick pan for, but 
to be honest with you, for everything else, I just simply use a pan like this. You heat it up first, then you put the oil in, and typically it should be pretty much nonstick for you. Incidentally, I do have this over medium heat, okay, just to let you know. And it is just about done. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the pink out of it. I don't want to overcook it because it is going to cook a little bit in the pot pie itself, but I want to make sure it's cooked, especially since I'm using turkey, which is uh, actually a poultry as opposed to a beef. I am a big fan of beef tartare and sushi, but I need to know the people that are making it before I'll try it. All right, now that looks pretty much like I've gotten the pink out of it, which is what I want to do. So let me go ahead and see if I can get this out of here real quick. I'm going to reserve that just for a bit. Whoops, that guy didn't want to go in the bowl, but he is going in the bowl. Now we still have a little bit of that oil in here. And let me go ahead and get the rest of these out. Let's leave the pan the way it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the shallots, and I'm going to add the garlic, just like that. I'm going to run that in the pan just a little bit. That looks kind of nice, doesn't it? I love the smell. I absolutely love the smell of things like onions and garlic when they're cooking in a pan. Incidentally, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I do have the heat at medium. Just medium, not low, not high, just medium. Now, it's not going to take long for these, but probably uh, a minute or two. You want to keep it live in the pan. You don't want them to burn too much. And I'm going to add just a little bit more oil. Grapeseed oil. Not a lot. You could try butter in here, too. I thought about that, too. Butter would probably be a nice addition. I think butter is a good addition to absolutely anything, to be honest with you. Okay. Now, we've got those pretty much softened up, and we're going to add the mushrooms now. Now, this is where you got to be careful because what's going to happen is you might wind up burning things. So I'm going to lower the heat to about a medium, medium low. And I'm going to add just a splash of some sea salt to get the process started. All right, now I'll see you in a couple of minutes. This will probably take about five to seven minutes. Okay, you ready? We're going to do something now. What we're going to do is deglaze the pan, and I'm going to use a little bit of sherry. Ah, say, Andy, why is it that every recipe that you do, you find a way to introduce alcohol? Well, I've got a problem. I know I do. But what I'm doing is I'm scraping up those brown bits, which are called fonds, F-O-N-D-S. They are flavor bits. They are concentrated stuff. See what I just did? My chef at the Culinary Institute, when I would do that, would like go ballistic. Don't hit the, the pan with your spoon. And if it's a metal spoon, it sounds even worse. But I do that occasionally. Here we go. So you can see I have scraped up and reconstituted those flavor bits back into the mushrooms. So oh, man. <laughs> I say this all the time, but I wish you could taste this because, wow, is it good. I'm going to bring back the turkey. Come on home. I'm going to put that back in here along with the attendant juices. And we're going to put a little bit of a stir on this thing. Kind of mix it up. You can see the protein. You can see the mushrooms. They're not just kind of conglomerated into a big mass with carrots and peas. That is nice. Now, guess what? We're going to put in the secret sauce. And that is our French sauce supreme. I have that right over here. You're going to love it. I'm going to put that in. Just like that. I could drink this stuff, and I am not exaggerating. It's great, and it's easy. It's as easy to make as any gravy. It really is. Oops. Get back in there. 
You must be in the pen to survive. <laughs> now, we're going to add a little bit. Where are they? Where are they? Hang on. i got to get something. I'm off camera. We're going to do a little seasoning now. Good chefs season and taste as they go along. So I'm going to put in some pepper. Pepper. I like pepper. Uh, you could do cayenne and things, but again, I think then we're going to start overcomplicating things. And watch the salt. But remember what one of my chef teachers taught me, and that is if you season, especially with salt, at the very end before everything is done, then it's going to taste salty. But if you season while you're cooking, it will taste seasoned. Wise words, and he was very true and right in what he said. All right, now this is what I'm going to do. First of all, I'm going to hang on. I'm off camera here. I'm going to get a little spoon here and see if I like this. Oh, it's good. I love it. I don't need any more salt, and I don't need any more pepper. Oh, no double dipping and testing. You know, put the spoon in, test it, put a spoon in again and test it. Same spoon. We don't like that. Now, I'm going to turn this actually to one, which is as low as it can go. So, real low heat. And I'm going to allow this to come together and meld now let's go ahead and leave this the way it is, almost no heat at all, for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Now that's going to make sure that the turkey is fully cooked, or the chicken, or the pork, whatever. But it's also going to give the ingredients a chance to blend together. Then we're going to assemble, and we're going to bake. There we go. Tell you what, I've preheated an oven to 390. That's uh, 198C. Now why that temperature? Well, I'm more concerned about the puff pastry, and that is the direction on the box to make the puff pastry when you bake it, 390 or 198. So let's just make one of these. I've got my ingredients right down here. I've got this stuff right here. I've got a little scoop. What I'm going to do is pick up a bunch of this. I like my recipes to be what I would call rustic. Now, what's that mean, really? Rustic means it can be really sloppy, and it's what it is. If I'm doing a pot pie, it's what I want it to be, and this will make two. I'm going to fill it up, and I hope it spills over just a little bit. That's rustic. I'm going to go ahead and take my puff pastry, which is defrosted, and I'm going to lay it on top, and I want it to drape over the sides. Now, trust me on this. I can make a pot pie that you could serve to the king, but I like rustic and pot pies. It's just nice. I'm going to cut myself a couple of holes right here. And one more over here. Like that. And I did make an egg wash. This is a little bit of water with one egg scrambled. And that kind of browns the top, makes it look kind of nice and pretty. Presentation. Don't forget we eat first with our eyes. Mmm, that's a yummy sound. All right, I'm going to pop this thing into the oven. We're going to let it sit there in the oven, cooking and being happy for about 20 minutes, okay? And then we'll be back and look at it. Are you ready for this? Look down here. This is a great, excellent, wonderful, tasty pot pie with just simple ingredients. Look at that. Just simple ingredients. You're going to love this pot pie. I guarantee it. Now this is Andy Anderson saying, keep the faith, guys, and keep on cooking.